worship this morning. I want to start us off with a call to worship I was reading in my devotions this morning. I was reading the high priestly prayer of John 17. This is where Jesus prays for his disciples, prays for believers because of his disciples just before his arrest. And I would ask you to rise and hear God's greeting and God's welcome this morning from that passage. Jesus says, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you have loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Our Heavenly Father welcomes us into his sanctuary this morning, into his presence, where we can have no fear of what the world has challenges for us. Welcome to worship this morning. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now take a minute to welcome each other to worship as well. All right, give me a hug, Chris.
we believe as a church identifies us as God's children and what we state and how we act and how we speak shows everybody else who we are. So I invite you this morning to read with me our statement of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may have a seat. Our general, our offering for general fund uh, will be collected as per usual at the door as you're coming in and out of the sanctuary. We have a time of prayer now with our Heavenly Father, uh, a time to be heard, a time to speak, and a time to be listened to, and a time to have conversation with God. So does anybody have any prayer requests for us? For you and Rhonda, and then for um, me since you've been a bad shot my baby. Okay. Uh, I had a praying yesterday was kids' day, and with Sue's help and my son LJ, we pulled through and we had a wonderful time. Saw lots and lots of kids. Busy, busy, yeah. very busy. Good. Anybody else? Yes, sure. My uh, brother Dave is having issues with his lungs. Um, not sure what's going on. This is his college orientation on Wednesday night, and his uh, party is Saturday, and anybody that wants to come can come between 2 and 4. So. And that is at Ferris? Is that what you said? You're going to Ferris? Orientation is Ferris and Bear Oh, Ferris and Bear, okay. So he has a summer program that he starts the 20th. Cool. And Monday after that. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for our waking up. We thank you for a night of rest. We thank you that we have an opportunity to step out on a Sunday morning in the creation that you have created and given us to come to church and to be with you and to worship you and to learn from you. We thank you. Dear Lord, that we now have an opportunity to listen to you. And that you open up yourself and your being to listen to us and the things that are on our hearts, the things that are on our minds, the things that we want to praise you for and the things that we need your guidance for. Dear Lord, we, we thank you that as part of the evangelical church worldwide, the group of body believer, or Bible believers and God followers around the world that we can spread the gospel in wherever we are and we ask for blessings on the church as it does its mission wherever it is, wherever it may be and however it does it that, that the mission is done and the mission is you, dear Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we Thank you for the mission you've given me and you've given Rhonda and we ask for 
direction in our next mission, our next assignment, and whatever that may be, that we know that it's your will. And we know that it is the way that you want us to go. Dear Lord, we thank you for the success as a church to be able to go out and, and be at Kids Day yesterday at the park and meet a whole bunch of kids and be busy and be out and be in the community for once and be able to go and just be present, especially after the last two years of everybody wanting to be cooped up and afraid of doing large gatherings and, and afraid to go out that, that everybody in the, in the community was able to go out and enjoy a day, dear Lord, and that we could show them what our church is like and be Jesus to them. Dear Lord, we pray for Dave and his lung issues, whatever it is may be, whatever it is that's causing the stress or the distress or, or trouble breathing, dear Lord, we just ask that you breathe into him a cleansing breath. Heal him from whatever is causing his lungs to not work properly. Be with those doctors and physicians and the respiratory therapists and the nurses all taking care of him so that he may breathe easy again. Dear Lord, we pray that Lisa is finally getting some back shots this week, dear Heavenly Father, and that we pray that those back shots alleviate the pain take away the pain that she deals with in her back every day. We just ask that they work fast and they work long, dear Lord, so that she may have comfort. Dear Lord, we, we praise you for our kids. We praise you for the blessings that they are, and we were thankful that Chris, we can celebrate with him graduating high school and and he can go on now to college and has his orientation at Ferris this week. And he's got some, some classes to take care of in Grand Rapids. And we ask for a blessing on him as he begins his college career, dear Lord. That it be well for him and full of wisdom for him and just be a joy to be in college, dear Heavenly Father, to be able to have that opportunity to have a further education. <laughs> We pray for a blessing on their open house coming up, that the weather be good and just be a great time for friends and family to get together and congratulate him. And to bring their prayers and their praises for him, dear Heavenly Father, at his gathering, dear Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gathering right now, the chance for us to get together and Hear your word now. And we ask for a blessing on the scripture reading that, that those words may be heard clear in our ears and that the message that has been inspired by you keeps in every one of us, touches every one of us, helps us to see something in every one of us that we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
continue on in the book of Proverbs. Um, we are reading from chapter 24. These are part of the wisdom Proverbs that are attributed to Solomon, but he gathered them. They're under the heading of wisdom from wise men, or sayings from wise men. If you have your Bibles with you, or if you take a look, you'll notice that they are broken down into 30 sayings. We're reading uh, verses 17 through 22, or sayings 28 through 30. Do not gloat when your enemy falls, when they stumble. Do not let your heart rejoice, or the Lord will see and disapprove and turn his wrath away from them. Do not fret because of evildoers or be envious of the wicked, for the evildoer has no future hope, and the lamp of the wicked will be snuffed out. Fear the Lord and the King, my son, and do not join with rebellious officials, for those too will send sudden destruction on them. And who knows what calamities they can bring. This is reading of God's word this morning. Could we just leave? Is the scripture passage on one slide? And if anyone wants to find Two? Okay. I couldn't fit it all. All right. <laughs> So recently, I have been consumed by watching any documentary I could find or movie on President Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln. This was this is actually much of a relief, especially to Rhonda, because these go in waves for me. And when I was in seminary, it was History Channel and anything about Hitler. Not that I wanted to be like Hitler, but I was. It was just different. I just wanted to study the man. There was just things about him that. Anyways, no more World War II movies for me for a while at least, but I have started a new recent movie and documentary plight in my life. There hasn't been a great movie about it yet. You know, Abraham Lincoln had that great movie with Daniel Day-Lewis playing the great emancipator, and, and you learn about the 13th Amendment. Lincoln's greatest victory, the, the amendment that made slavery illegal and things like that. And I find that I learned more about the man then than I did in school. And documentaries are a great option when you don't have time to sit and read, or like me, you can't sit still long enough to read. But I've moved on. I, I have a new U.S. history hero. Just recently, the History Channel did a two-parter on Theodore Roosevelt. It says something about my education when the only thing that I knew about TR was that he had a monocle, big teeth, said speak softly and carry a big stick. But there was so much to the man that I didn't know, I, I laughed that I had only made it through about 20 minutes of the first episode and I was hooked just on the idea. There's, there's so much that I've already learned and there's so much that I, I, I want to learn and have already. Some of his greatest moments were the creation of the Rough Riders was a group of volunteer soldiers from New York that he trained with special weapons. They had the best firearms, they had the best riding horses, and they fought in the Spanish-American War. They took San Juan Hill, which was a huge victory, and it was something that everybody, all the career soldiers said, there's no way you're going to do it. I also learned that he had some great direction and leadership that he exhibited during the creation of the Panama Canal. He pushed for it, he pushed for it, he knew it was going to be good for trade. And when they finally signed the agreement, there's a picture of him where he jumps into one of the excavators and starts digging part of the tunnel on his own. He's got a pure white Jamaican suit on and he's, he's digging the, uh, the, truck, the canal on his own. And then there's this 84 minute speech he gave with a bullet lodged in his chest just next to his lung that happened after a failed assassination attempt. He stood up there and he showed the crowd and the, his audience the bullet wound and he said, I, I need you to have a little grace and be really quiet. I can't speak long, but it takes a lot to kill a bull moose. TR lived a life of challenge and victory. He lived a life of support and opposition. He did everything with great energy. He always seemed to have a plan for success and a backup plan in case that plan didn't work, but failure was never a plan. 
because he was an, uh, a politician, he had his enemies as well. So Teddy Roosevelt had to be protective and productive at the same time. He always had an American can do it right type attitude. TR had the ability to encourage and motivate anyone he met and to explain how to do things right and properly so that they are successful. In a speech he gave in Paris, France, he said this, the poorest way to face life is to face it with a sneer. There's no more unhealthy being, no man less worthy of respect than he who either really holds or fails to hold an attitude of sneering disbelief towards all that is great and lofty. He's talking about people that look down their nose and, and judge without checking on themselves. He goes on, he says, it's not the critic who counts, but the credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming but who does actually strive to do the deeds. I would say there that, that probably in the background, he would probably agree to say that he's also maybe saying, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem on that one. But those were some motivating words from a man who lived, motivated all his life, and he wanted everyone confident. He wanted the United States of America strong and while prepared with the integrity they need to take on whatever the rest of the world threw at the United States and whatever citizen in the United States had to deal with. The three proverbial sayings we read are not teaching us to have an attitude. They're not teaching us to have a sneer at, at our enemies. What they are is they're teaching us to have this kind of integrity. An integrity as Christians that we should already have, that we keep, and that we hang on to. They're teaching us how to keep cool under pressure. And of course, these Proverbs that we read, we're looking at and we're, we're hearing, they teach us how to be wise in the face of opposition from our enemies. As I said before, these three sayings are a total of 30 total. They're not attributed to anybody, but they were important enough. Solomon had his reasons to write them down and collect them and put them in his book. He, he wanted his people to be equipped with everything and for anything that they could encounter. And God today wants us to be prepared for anything and everything that we may encounter. So when we read these three sayings, we can take these Proverbs and we can put them in any situation in our lives. I think we can relate to these Proverbs, amen? Amen. I sure have. Do you have an enemy of some type? Do we have things going on in our lives that our muscles have no effect on? Are we in a season of life that has us fighting instead of flourishing? Maybe like Teddy Roosevelt had his haters in Washington, D.C. Maybe we have our own haters trying to keep us down. Do we need to ask God for special help? As God's children, we are special. We are special in the fact that our Heavenly Father is there to lean on when we need comfort and protection. Our Heavenly Father is there to take care of us when Satan is doing his very best to make us feel the very worst. And I want to say, if Satan's working hard on your life, you must be doing something right for God. Mm -hmm. As Jesus said in John 17, Jesus and God, God and Jesus, we and them, we are all part of the family of God where we can get that wisdom and that strength. When there is no shortage of personal enemies, godly wisdom is the thing we need to fight off evil. Brain strength over body strength, mind over muscle, if you will, is what matters the most. God's wisdom of any type guides us during battle. As Christian soldiers, we fight with special tactics, much like the Rough Riders did. 
But we don't have guns, we have God. And we don't have horses, we have the Holy Spirit. We do what we do and we do how we do, simply put, because we're God's children. Even though we're broken. Even though all of us fall, at times we still belong to God. Apostle Peter talks about this in his first letter to the church. 1 Peter chapter 2. Verses 9 and 10. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were a, not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you have received, had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And because so, we, we have all we need to succeed because we are this chosen people. This happened to be my son Peter's favorite verse in elementary school. I don't know if it still is. Well, Peter talks about everything we need, everything we, we could ever want in his second letter to the church. 2 Peter 1, verses 3 through 9. His divine power has given us everything we need for godly life through our knowledge, or that wisdom, of him who called us by his own glory and his goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires, for this reason make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive, especially in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. We have all we need. We all are who we are because God made us that way. And nobody can take us from God. Nobody can take me from God. Nobody can take you from God. This is why we don't gloat when our enemies fail because the Lord hates pride. But he loves a humble heart. We are told to love our enemies. When an enemy falls, that should be and could be a chance for us to come alongside that individual. Not make them an enemy anymore, but introduce them. When we gloat over somebody's failures, we miss the chance to be Jesus to people. Especially those who need, people, or need Jesus. Solomon says that those people who need Jesus like that are, are trapped by evil in this world and they have no hope or no future. But if we introduce them to the Lord and Savior, they'll have hope and future. It's important to remember where we have come from in life. When we gloat and have pride, it takes over and we forget our brokenness. We forget who we are. We forget our Dependence on God. As St. Peter says, once we, when we forget that we were once nothing and now we are something and we have received God's mercy and are now children of God, we fear and revere our Heavenly Father. And as Solomon says in Proverbs 1, to fear God is to know that godly wisdom already. In verse 21 of our reading today, the final saying, there's a shift. The sayings go from a how to a why. The last two verses of why sayings tell us that we need to stay away from the people who choose to remain in sin's grasp. Those people will remain lost and like quicksand will suck everybody down with them. 
It'll be destruction because of sin. Sin is destruction. But if we pay attention and use that godly wisdom that we have, there is hope. The kind of hope that comes from knowing Jesus Christ. Whatever Solomon said in the Old Testament, even though Jesus wasn't on the scene yet, Jesus is full on in those verses of the wise people that Solomon wrote down. And Jesus also teaches about this in John 10, 15. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I and the Father are one. That's a special kind of wisdom that we have as well because we know Jesus. And it brings an amazing amount of hope. If sin is destruction, God is hope. Oswald Chambers and early 20th century Scottish Scottish Baptist evangelist and teacher. You may know him from his works, My Utmost for His Highest, once said this, that the remarkable thing about God is that when you fear God, you fear nothing else. Whereas if you do not fear God, you fear everything else. We don't have to fear what others say. We don't have to fear what others go through, all the negativity and, and the things that we're dealing with in the head in this world will fall away, thanks, because we have this mindful of godly wisdom in us. We remember and we're smart enough to remember that we have all this love that we can receive from God. So thanks be to God every day as you use your brains for the love and the wisdom and the strength that we have from Him in this tough world. Amen. Dear Lord in heaven, we thank you for your wisdom. We thank you that you speak directly to us, to our minds and to our brains, dear Lord, in our lives. And you get right to the heart of the matter. And you guide our soul, and then we have also then the skills and abilities and the tools and the talent from you to go about in this evil world and be able to withstand it, but at the same time, bring the will of Jesus to it. Help us to bring more Jesus to the world, dear Lord. Help us to stay away from the detractors and take care of those detractors, dear Lord, so something that we don't have to fear. So that your love and your good news in the gospel can be heard louder and louder. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
God's plan. So as we go out from here, may you go with God's guidance, protection, and wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Go in shalom. Thank you.